Look like the cream of wheat man finna get cooked. Now available in paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Given to temptation, pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback and e-readers today. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> The FBI raided the homes of several top officials connected to New York Mayor Eric Adams and confiscated the cell phones of several others, including the New York Police Commissioner. Four top officials to Mayor Adams were the targets of raids by federal agents, including NYPD Police Commissioner Edward Caban. It marks yet another investigation into the Adams administration. Natalie Dudridge is in the newsroom with the latest on what we know. Natalie. Cindy, good afternoon. Well, the nature of this investigation still remains a mystery. A city spokesperson did tell CBS News New York that there is no indication that Mayor Adams is a target of any investigation. Today, we did receive a new statement from the public schools chancellor saying he is cooperating with a federal inquiry, but says at this time he cannot comment further. Sources tell CBS News New York that federal agents raided the homes of at least four top officials in Mayor Eric Adams' administration, including Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright and City Public Schools Chancellor David Banks, who live together. We caught up with Banks on Thursday outside of his home. It's a great uh, first day of school. The homes of the Chancellor's brother, Deputy Mayor Philip Banks, and NYPD Commissioner Edward Caban were also raided. The NYPD put out a brief statement regarding Police Commissioner Caban, saying, The department is aware of an investigation by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York involving members of service. The Associated Press is also reporting federal agents seized electronic devices from the home of Timothy Pearson, a mayoral advisor and former high-ranking NYPD official. Although details into this case and reasons for the raids remain unclear, sources say Wednesday's raids are unrelated to a separate federal corruption investigation involving alleged donations made by Turkish officials to the mayor's 2021 campaign, for which the FBI seized Adams' electronic devices last year. Mayor Adams spoke to political reporter Marsha Kramer Thursday afternoon about what he knows regarding the case. I'm not aware of any misdoings, and I'm going to, again, follow uh, the rules, and I will continue to tell the team to do that. Those are questions I can't answer. I'm going to, I know what I'm going to do, and that is information that's needed to show that I have always followed the law. We're going to give that information. And again, Cindy, a spokesperson for the city told us that there is no indication that the mayor or any of his immediate staff are a focus of an investigation. Reporting in the newsroom, Natalie Dudridge, CBS News, New York. Natalie, thank you. Now, last Wednesday, FBI agents raided the homes of several top officials in the Adams administration. And of those officials, they raided the homes of First Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright, Deputy Mayor Philip Banks, and New York Schools Chancellor David Banks. And they also looked to raid the home of New York City Police Commissioner Edward Caban. And as they were executing those search warrants, they also looked to confiscate the cell phones of, and tablets and other devices of other top officials, such as people like Timothy Pearson, a mayoral advisor and former NYPD official. And they also looked to confiscate devices from New York Police Commissioner's twin brother, and they also looked to take the phones from and devices of other top police officials in an investigation as related to political influence in, as related to New York City. Now, this is the third investigation that is currently going on as related to the mayor and officials in his cabinet and part of his whole group of officials that helped him get elected. Now, back in 2023, the FBI raided the home of his fundraiser, Brianna Suggs, as related to campaign fundraising issues. And then they also raided the home of an Asian Adam aide, Winnie Greco, as related to possible influence peddling or other alleged issues as related to 
a mall in Queens, and they also raided a, a, another person's home as related to a scheme involving the Turkish government and the opening of the Turkish consulate in, in New York City. Now, all of these investigations are quite troubling because they paint a picture of a mayor who basically isn't looking to serve the needs of the people, but looking to use the city offices as a fiefdom to basically peddle out favors to friends and cronies. And that optically looks bad for a mayor who ran on a campaign of being a former police officer who was looking to clean up New York City. That's the whole situation that the cream of wheat man in, is in and is looking to be cooked by. And it basically is looking to me like the cream of wheat man's time is basically being up as related to being mayor of New York. And what's happening here is a case of this mayor, again, not understanding the subtle politics transpiring around him as related to this entire situation, because some may speculate that this is being done because the mayor basically went against Joe Biden as related to the migrant crisis here in New York City. However, I really, when I look at this whole situation, it's just white supremacy breaking yet another tool that it has no use for. And that's where Eric Adams got it all twisted way back in 2021 when he was running for mayor in New York City. He actually thought that he could go out here and bootlick and pander and get favor with all of those individuals in the blue party, such as Joe Biden and Kathy Hochul, and he thought he could create a covert contract with himself as he looked to virtue signal on policies like the jab mandate that Bill de Blasio implemented, and instead of looking to serve the people of New York, he looked to try to curry favor and clout chase with those individuals, and as he looked to curry favor and clout chase with those individuals, he thought that he could go out here and tow the party line, thought he could tow the party line, and thought people were on his side. However, since he didn't understand the subtle politics transpiring around him, he couldn't see how white supremacy was playing a game of chess with his career, and they were basically looking to get him off the board since minute one. No, Eric Adams was too busy out here bootlicking and pandering to all of those individuals in the system of white supremacy, thinking that he could go out here and get a covert contract and get himself another job. I mean, he had even delusions and aspirations of being president and running for president, like his predecessor, Bill de Blasio, and he thought that he, if he supported these policies, of people like Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo and look to support people like Kathy Hochul, they would support him. But in the system of white supremacy, there is one axiom that Professor Black Truth has always stated, and that axiom is bootlick is a job without a retirement plan. And it's clear to me that all of those white supremacists in the Blue Party don't plan on letting Eric Adams retire uh, after his term as mayor is over. No, they basically have a place for the former cop, the same place that they had for David Dinkins, making sure that he leaves office in an ignominious fashion, leaves office in an ignominious fashion, because in their political chess game, he was always a pawn, always a pawn as related to their agenda because their agenda was to make a statement with his term as mayor and that statement was that if you give a black man power he would not be able to be competent as related to that position and as he's not competent they use that as an example to everyone to why you don't elect black men as mayors and have them running municipalities because they are completely incompetent. That was what the plan was for his predecessor, David Dinkins, and basically what they did, yes, they passively allowed him to be the first black mayor, but aggressively they basically created a narrative 
around his incompetence where they said that he basically let crime get out of control from the 90s up until about 1993 as the crack epidemic was raging. And as the crack epidemic was raging, his indifference towards New Yorkers basically created a campaign that basically showed most New Yorkers he wasn't fit for office. And that's what Rudy Giuliani was able to capitalize on as a white man. He was able to come in and be that savior for most of New York. And that's how he wound up losing office. And because of his incompetence, they basically, we haven't had a black mayor for 30 years. Now, in the aftermath of the pandemic, Eric Adams basically wound up falling to, into being a political pawn because, again, they basically picked him to be a patsy because they knew he was a bootlick. They knew he was a bootlick to get favor. And he basically started out the gate not showing he would be a leader that as a cop who would clean up New York City. No, he was a follower looking to gain favor with higher up members of the Blue Party hoping to create a covert contract where he could get a higher job in political office and look to toe the party line as related to dysfunctional Bill de Blasio policies like the jab mandate that prevented New Yorkers from going to work after the co during in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that one policy basically showed how Eric Adams had jumped the shark as related to his entire political career because as he looked to toe that party line and further looked to escalate things by keeping New Yorkers who didn't want to take that shot from being able to go to work for almost a year, he basically started to put the nails in the coffin as related to his political career because he had already alienated a million black voters by showing that he wasn't going to support black people because most of the black people were the ones who didn't take the shot and got into a war with Kyrie Irving that basically showed black people he didn't support them. And as he didn't support them, he basically abandoned the black community. And as he started bootlicking and pandering, what he did was think he could get in with white supremacy, thought he could get in and get a seat with white supremacy, not understanding what Ralph Ellison talked about in his book, Invisible Man, about trying to get on that carpet, that the carpet is going to shock you. And Eric Adams got the shock of his life as he and his cronies tried to get and build political power in the system of white supremacy, thought they could go out here and make these backdoor deals, not understanding that in the system of white supremacy, the system of white supremacy is not interested in seeing a black man get any sort of power, and many of the power brokers you deal with basically see the, the, sub, the move you're trying to make and basically will set a person up for a checkmate that was what was going on behind the scenes as related to Eric Adams and many of the alleged deals he was making as related to this investigation. Again, alleged because we don't have any proof. And this basically was the start, was part of the beginning of the end of Eric Adams. This and the just dis disastrous direction of the migrant crisis was the beginning of the end of Eric Adams. Now, Eric Adams at this point is basically on the road to becoming a one-term mayor by just the migrant crisis alone and the complete mishandling of the migrant crisis. And that basically destroyed his approval ratings with the non-black and white coalition of voters that he thought would put him over because he thought he didn't need the black vote. And the, Derek Adams basically is basically on a road to being where the cream of wheat man is going to be cooked similar to his buddy bishop david whitehead who basically no not B david lamar whitehead his name is lamar whitehead who currently is in a federal prison for the next nine years as related to issues with the federal government where he right now is with bubba tiny roscoe big dave melvin and mr sprinkles and it looks like white supremacy is looking to take this tool of Eric Adams and break this tool. They want to break this tool because, again, this is all about making a point for the white supremacists. It's not about, again, the whole issue of politics. It's all about, a, about their agenda regarding black leadership. 
and Eric Adams basically was the patsy as related to their whole narrative of black leadership that they've had since the days of birth of a nation because in the days of birth of a nation they had said in that movie if you give a black man power he would be corrupt and out of control and everything would be in chaos and when we look at New York City basically Eric Adams proved the point of those white supremacists that they presented in birth of a nation and Basically, they created their own axiom as related to that because, again, the white supremacist always picks a bootlick they can get in front of to be able to get their points across. And they have basically gotten their point across as related to Eric Adams. And now that they basically have made their point, they are setting him up for the checkmate as related to the end of his political career, setting him up for the checkmate as related to his political career because he's in a worse position than David Dinkins was as related to the crack epidemic of the early 90s and the death of Brian Watkins which was the nail in the coffin for David Dinkins because as he apathetically did nothing about the crime in New York as we went up to 2,000 murders David Dinkins didn't really want to do anything until a white person Brian Watkins wound up dead and after Brian Watkins wound up dead, that's when he decided to implement his plan to deal with crime. But by that time, it was too late because white supremacy had set up Rudy Giuliani to be the savior that would run against him. And in the case of Eric Adams, who already has extremely low approval ratings, lower than any mayor in 25 years, a mayor who is associated with the failure of the migrant crisis and has video of him embracing migrants and then saying that the migrant crisis would destroy New York City. I mean, dude basically set himself up for failure because his opponents in the blue party are the ones who are going to be taking these tapes and running them against him in 2025. I mean, you've got guys like Comptroller Brad Landers sitting up there thinking about primarying Eric Adams and setting him up to take him down, setting him up to take him down because, again, Eric Adams didn't see the subtle politics transpiring around him as related to white supremacy. No, he was too busy looking, licking boots to look at the chessboard, and, and since he didn't look at the chessboard, he couldn't see the routine moves that the white supremacists were using against him, and since he couldn't see the routine moves that were being used against him, he is now in a place where he's almost, he's already been checked, and he's on the road to being checkmated, because this officer, former officer, again, who wrote on a campaign of saying that he was going to fight crime, hasn't really improved the quality of life of New Yorkers. No, he basically made the life of New Yorkers worse, one with that jab mandate that kept New Yorkers working for close to a year, and two, letting all the migrants into New York City that basically destroyed the quality of life in New York City, and three, sitting there making excuses regarding a sanctuary city law, a sanctuary city law that clearly is unconstitutional, but his office won't make a constitutional challenge to it, won't make a constitutional challenge to it because he doesn't want to upset members of the party. And the great irony is, is that when he went out here and didn't want to upset those members of the party, it basically was the thing that led to the complete implosion of his political career, led to the implosion of his career because when he only had the time and the backbone and the stones to call out Joe Biden, it basically, again, was one of those things that was the only time he ever stood up, but all throughout his career, he was bootlicking all throughout things, again, hoping to gain favor. And sadly, like George Jefferson, who chased Mr. Whittendale, Eric Adams basically followed the lead of white supremacy, thinking white supremacy would give him favor, but white supremacy gave him everything that they always give a black bootlick, and that is a foot in the ass before they wind up breaking their tool, again, breaking their tool to make sure that it doesn't get weaponized, then that's why they've basically ostracized him at the um, DNC convention. They basically ostracized him because all of the people there knew that the cream of wheat man was about to get cooked, and he's about to either get cooked three ways. One, he will get cooked 
either by these federal indictments to he will possibly get cooked if he does get primaried by a member of his own party like Brad Landers, or three, he's going to definitely going to get cooked in the next election. It's a three-way way of getting cooked. And again, the cream of wheat man basically didn't see the recipe that white supremacy was setting him up for. And again, white supremacy always looks for people they can get in front of, always looks for people they can get in front of, look for people who can't see the subtle politics transpiring around them, can't see the subtle politics transpiring around them, because in, as they look for people, again, they look for the person they can get in front of, and again, Eric Adams couldn't see who was getting in front of him, and that's why he's looking like he's going to be behind as related to this situation, and basically is done at this point, basically done as related to New York politics, and again, done in the same ignominious fashion that David Dinkins was done, but done even worse because what they want to do is put so much trauma in your mind regarding black male politicians that you'll never want to vote for another one. And with the whole situation with Eric Adams, I definitely believe people aren't going to vote for another black mayor for the next 30 years, if not the next century, because the whole tarnishing of the office due to his dysfunctional policies, such as continuing to follow the lead of dysfunctional laws created by Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo, basically because they were white men, and he's too afraid to undo the process of a white man, him and the dysfunctional city council, and him alienating the black vote, again, he's done so much damage, we're never going to see another black mayor for another hundred years and that is by design because what white supremacy wants to do is burn the idea in your mind that black politicians are incompetent black people black men cannot lead and eric adams basically proved all the points that the white supremacists wanted he's basically a tool that they used to prove their points and that's basically the reason why they elected him as mayor to prove their points and now that they've proven their point and they've used this tool they're now looking to break this tool break this tool so it can never be weaponized against them and look to push a black agenda not that this man ever pushed a black agenda because he was a white supremacist bootleg again the george jefferson of politics and now that they've finished having their fun running the george jefferson of politics they're getting ready to cancel his show and they're canceling his show because they want to get back to the business of white supremacy with the blue party and they want to get back to that business and get things back to business as usual now that they've dealt with their cream of wheat man now that they've cooked their cream of wheat man they no longer have a use for the cream of wheat man and the, sadly the only person who doesn't see that he's done is eric adams now if you want to pick up some of my books on the sjs direct imprint you can find those books on amazon.com in paperback and kindle format you can also find them at other online booksellers like draft the digital google play barnes and noble and big box retailers like walmart and target and if you'd like to see me make more videos about other topics because i don't like making political videos you can send a donation to the patreon the paypal or the cash app by clicking the links in the description box that's all i have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe now available in paperback and e-readers a steam horror in the hamptons the aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this action-packed all-new esteem series adventure get your copy of esteem horror in the hamptons in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere now available in paperback and kindle unlimited john haynes the man with nothing to lose the man who rules the world runs with the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed all-new john haynes series adventure get the regular and variant editions of john haynes the man with nothing to lose on amazon.com today now available in paperback from the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.